Hello everyone, I am Samitha Varavikar. So our today's topic is file system analysis. In that, we will learn different concepts regarding the file system and its role in digital forensics. In this, we will see what are file systems, different types of file systems, the structure and metadata, data storage and organization, identifying and analyzing deleted files, and lastly, the conclusion. So by the end of the video, you will understand the significance of file system in digital forensics. So we'll see exactly what is meant by file system. A file system is a software layer that structures and manages data storage on a device. They define how the data is organized, accessed and protected. So basically it describes how the data is managed, organized and accessed from the storage devices like hard drives or flash drives. Next, we'll see different functions of file system. File system defines how the data is organized, accessed, and how the metadata is managed. So first is data organization. It determines how and where the data resides or is arranged. And it also defines the structure of file system. Next is data access. It provides different ways to read, write, and modify the files. Also, it manages who has the permission to access those files. Next is metadata management. Metadata is basically like an ID card, identity card for a file, which provides the details like file name, when that file was created, modified, or accessed. Next point is importance of file system in digital forensics. File systems are important in solving the cases which involves digital evidence. They help in recovering the deleted files and also in reconstructing the events. So the three main points in this are uncovering hidden evidence, reconstructing the timestamps and identifying culprits. First, uncovering hidden evidence. Deleted files often leaves the traces behind. So different techniques are used to recover those traces or the fragments of the deleted files which are left on the storage device. Next is reconstructing timestamps. Timestamps and the logs, they often reveal some inform important information like when the file was created, when it was modified or when that was accessed last. Next is identifying culprits. In this, the permissions of the files the activity and the logs, user activity and the logs, these specify some pot potential suspects. Next point in file system analysis is classification of file systems. So basically file systems are classified based on their architecture, access method and functionality. So first we'll see classification of file system based on their architecture. File systems are evolved over time from the simpler ones like FAT to more advanced systems like NTFS and ZFS. Further, we'll see these each one in detail. Next, we will see some features of this file system that is FAT, NTFS and ZFS. So FAT stands for file allocation table. The architecture of FAT is simple and linear. It means it is in chain of a cluster. Cluster, it is a group of sector. As we have seen in previous video, it is the component of a storage device. So on FAT, the data is stored in the form of clusters. And it is of limited size. That is, it is 4 GB in size. FAT is used in some older operating systems and SD cards. Next is NTFS. That is new technology file system. Some features of NTFS are complex architecture, journaling, file recovery and security. So the architecture of NTFS is complex. That is, it is multi-layered. Journaling. Journaling means it maintains a log of file system changes for the crash recovery purpose. File recovery means it stores detailed filed metadata which helps to reconstruct the deleted or damaged files. And in terms of security, it uses access control list. 
access control list determines the rules of users who can access or modify those files next is zfs zfs is zettabyte file system some features of zfs are log structured write once append structure self healing and fault tolerance so zfs is basically a log structured file system write once append structure means the data is written on the disk in sequential form it enhances the performance of that and also ensures the integrity of the data next is self healing so it automatically detects and repairs the data errors and fault tolerance in fault tolerance zfs implements some features like mirroring and checksumming so checksumming means it is like a fingerprint of the file which verifies two files are identical or not so in checksum some string is created and it is used to identify the file if either if it is modified or altered and in mirroring it fix those errors next is categorization of file system based on the access method so when a file is used or some information in that is read and accessed there are several ways for accessing that information of a file first is direct access and second is sequential access in direct access the files are accessed directly while in sequential access the files are accessed in a order like one after another so for example every storage block stores four records and we know that the record which we need is stored in the 10th block so in that case sequential access is not implemented because it will look in all the blocks or it will traverse in all the blocks in order to access the needed record means from first block to the 10th block but in case of direct access it will give us the exact result that is it will directly access the needed record that is the 10th block next is classification of file system based on its functionality that is single user which is for individual use or single user multi user which is designed for multiple people and ns ns that is network attached storage which is designed for centralized storage across a network next point is structure of file system and metadata so first we'll see the structure that is different components of file system the three main components are super block inodes and directories super block it is the central repository of a file system means it is the central control of the file system with some crucial information like total size block size inode location and virgin information inode inodes are the file descriptors that is they are the unique ids for each file with essential details those details include file name type size block allocation permissions timestamps and data block pointers next is directories directories means the structures of files and folders each entry contains the file name and the specified inode number next we'll see metadata as i have said before metadata is like an id card of a file that provides the inform important information regarding the file beyond its content so it includes file name timestamp access permissions and more file name file name it means it is an unique identification for a file for the purpose of its access timestamp timestamp records when the file was created modified or accessed analyzing the timestamp helps in identifying the user activity 
or the events which which have occurred throughout access permission it provides permissions for read write and access for a specific file in case of forensics it gives information about the user identification by looking through the unauthorized attempts and also through the intrusion detection other attribute it includes file type size encryption flags and owner it provides information for tracking the file versions and also the purpose so next point in file system analysis is data storage and organization in our previous video of computer architecture we have learned about these components of the hard disk that is sector track and cluster so as we know that sector is the smallest unit of storage on a hard drive it is a fixed size that is of 512 bytes track track it is a concentric ring or circular ring on the surface of the hard disk it is comprised of group of sectors cluster cluster is also a group of sector and it is known as a single unit of data allocation so the next point is file allocation methods file allocation methods determine how the data is placed or managed or how the disk blocks are allocated for each file so three main methods in that are contiguous linked and indexed in contiguous data is stored in consecutive sectors on the disk and in linked data scattered across the non contiguous sector and in indexed index table maps the file names to data block location so we'll see each of this methods by the help of some diagrams so in this first diagram that is of contiguous allocation in this method each file occupies sets of block on the disk this method is much easier to implement only we have to remember the starting location and the length of the file so this figure here shows how the files are arranged contiguously in this example there is a file named resume.pdf which starts from the disk block number 5 and the length of this file is 4 blocks so the disk block number 5 6 7 8 are allocated for this file so this in this method the file is arranged contiguously that is in consecutive manner and here the points to remember are the starting disk block number and the length of the file next we will see linked allocation in this method each file is linked list of the disk blocks the allocated disk blocks are scattered anywhere in this disk as you have shown in the example so this figure is an example of linked allocation Uh, in this figure there is a file named g the starting disk block number is 9 and it is linked to the next disk block that is 16 here and 16 is linked back to the disk block number 1 1 one is linked to another disk block and so on so the last disk block of the file shown in the directory is 25 so this is about the linked allocation next is indexed allocation in this all the pointers are brought together into one block here which is called as index block so each file has an index block which is array of the disk blocks so this figure shows index allocation the directory entry has the address of index block 
that is block 19 shown here the index blocks has the address of disk block that is shown here of the file so all these disk blocks are brought together under an array which is which are termed as indexed so this is called as an indexed allocation so next point we will see is file fragmentation file fragmentation occurs when a file's data is scattered across the non contiguous sectors due to limited free space forcing the data into fragmented blocks file modifications and deletions creating gaps in previously contiguous blocks so file fragmentation is just like in jigsaw puzzle it occurs when the parts of the files are spread or scattered across different locations next point is identifying and analyzing deleted files in that we'll first see data remnants data remnants means even the file is deleted some bits or fragments of the data remains after the deletion due to some factors like incomplete data overwriting and metadata traces incomplete data overwriting means new data just replace the parts of deleted files but the fragments of the deleted files are left as it is on that storage device and metadata traces means some file system logs and slack spaces or some fragments retain some information about the deleted file next is traces in file system once in that First is unlinked directory entries. So once the file is deleted, the path of that file becomes orphaned, means it still remains on that disk. It may contain some information regarding the timestamp and even it contains the data fragments of the deleted file. Second is slack space. Slack space means unused space or area on the storage device. It may hold the fragments of the previously stored data. Next point is recovery techniques. So these are the mentioned techniques which are used in the recovery of deleted files. That is file carving, keyword searching and slack space analysis. File carving means identifying the data structures within the unallocated space to reconstruct the files based on their formats that is headers and footers keyword searching means scanning the unallocated space for specific keywords which are associated with those deleted files and slack space analysis means analyzing the unused area on that disk to recover the deleted data fragments next important point is challenges and limitations in this process so first is file overwriting means repeated writing on the same storage location this can overwrite the entire disk and even erase the deleted file fragments next is fragmentation fragmentation means scattering of deleted files or the fragments across multiple locations so this can cause difficulty in recovery and encryption Encrypted files, even though they are deleted, remains unreadable, that is un encrypted, without the decryption key. So it is quite challenging. So this was all about the file system and its significance in digital forensics. File systems are the foundational base of data storage and analyzing of the, its structure, metadata and data remnants helps in finding the hidden evidence, events analysis, and in identifying the user activity. So, understanding file system is crucial during the investigation with the use of different digital forensics tools. So, this was all about the file systems. Thank you.